During the coronavirus pandemic, Hillsborough Area Regional Transit gave its top administrators big raises. We're talking tens of thousands of dollars in some cases. That's very disappointing. In the meantime, frontline workers like bus operators got significantly smaller one-time essential worker payments. We are the front line and we are hurting. How do you sleep at night? How do you look your operators in the face knowing that you got these big raises and think that we're supposed to be all right? Weeks after we started asking questions, the new CEO says she's looking into these pay inequities. Let's see what's brewing. I'm Jenna Bourne, and I'm an investigative reporter at 10 Tampa Bay. If you're new here, welcome to our caffeine-fueled, homemade deep dive into issues that matter to you. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss an episode. Look at this cute little baby. This is Faith Letitia Brown, and these pictures you're seeing are the only way Letitia Jones has been able to see her grandbaby. That's because she's afraid she might get COVID-19 at work. I have not even been able to hold the baby because I don't know what I have. Jones is a heart paratransit van operator, so she transports people with disabilities that prevent them from using heart buses. Those paratransit vehicles do not have shields on them at all, like the buses. So we're open to um, anything that's known to man. And we gotta knock on people's doors, and then people have to touch because we might have visual impaired. They have to touch and like Ms. Jones said, we don't know what they have. They, call, they might call for you. We told you in our very first episode of What's Brewing in April 2020 that heart bus operators felt unsafe. Despite signs telling people to socially distance and mask up, bus operators tell us plenty of riders don't follow the rules. Those buses are packed. Since then, more than 80 heart employees have tested positive for COVID-19. That's about 10% of their workforce. I was out on quarantine back in August for being around someone that had COVID and um, someone at work. Yes. And all of this is on top of the physical and verbal abuse they face from riders. In February, 2020, we told you on 10 Tampa Bay that attacks on heart drivers increased 220% in 2019. They're trying to penetrate the weapon into my, to my heart. We're still waiting on complete data from heart on 2020 attacks. And while bus and paratransit operators are out there facing all those threats, Hart's office workers have gotten to work from home. And those are the people that got big raises last year. I'm just devastated. I can't believe it. It's, I can't believe it. I can't believe I'm working for an agency that would even treat us like this. Through a public records request, we got data on all the non-union hard employees, basically the office and administrative staff, who got raises last year. And we found the top administrators who were already making the most money got the biggest raises. 23 people got raises of $10,000 or more. Four of them got raises of $20,000 or more. Director of Financial Operations, Joan Brown, she got a 32% pay increase worth nearly $32,000. Director of Risk and Legal Services, Carolyn House Stewart, who also served as the interim CEO for most of last year, she got a 21% pay increase, worth nearly $25,000. And what did union workers like drivers and maintenance workers get? A one-time $1,500 essential worker bonus. All while their overtime hours got cut because Hart reduced service last year. We need more. We need more, just as well as you, you know, $1,500 for people that have family of four. Some people are taking care of their parents. Some people are taking care of their grandkids. So at this point, you might be saying, whoa, how did this happen? We found out all of these raises, which happened in October 2020, were because of this. A compensation study that compared the salaries that Hart pays to what other transit authorities pay. But guess what? That compensation study only looked at administrative staff salaries. They had a consultant firm come out to do analysis on all their jobs. They never brought a consultant firm to rate our jobs to see if we were underpaid. What would you say to heart operators and, and maintenance workers who feel like they were treated unfairly in 2020? Um, they were. <laughs> um, and, 
you know, we, and they've been unfe- treated unfairly for decades. This is Pat Kemp. She's on Hart's board and she's chair of the Hillsborough County Commission. What did you know about this compensation study that led to these races? You know, what very I, I, little. <laughs> it's been done over th- very little, truly. It's been done over three different directors. We've been packed with all kinds of transit decisions to make, COVID decisions. There still are not resources to do what we need to do at all. You talk about Hart being strapped for resources, but these these raises still went through. How did that get past the board? (laughs) It was presented to the board as a whole budget We had a lot of things to look at. Um, Those are presented in categories. Um, You know, the way it was presented to us was that the uh, staff wasn't taking any of the bonuses that the drivers were taking, um, that that the drivers were being given. Weeks after we started asking questions about these pay inequities in January, Hart's new CEO, Adelie Legrand, said during a finance and audit committee meeting that she's looking into it. So what we'd like to do is take some more time to go through this analysis and then present to you a way forward so that we can, you know, make some adjustments as needed to um, bring more equity into this process. Legrand became CEO in January, a couple months after these raises happened. Now, Hart is about to start bargaining with the union on pay for these frontline workers. But there's a new challenge. Last month, the Florida Supreme Court ruled Hillsborough County's transportation sales tax was unconstitutional. And that means Hart will have less money than they thought. We will not be able to do everything they deserve right now um, it, with, without having the sales tax there. But I certainly, I think there is an, a real um, commitment on the part of the board, most of the board, and um, on the commitment on the part of the CEO, which is extremely important to bring about more equity and uh, better compensation. They deserve every bit of it. Thanks for watching What's Brewing. Subscribe to this channel so you don't miss an episode, and I'll see you next time.